Welcome everybody to Veeam on 2021. You're watching theCUBE. My name is Dave Vellante. You know, in 2020, cyber adversaries, they seized the opportunity to really up their game and target workers from home and digital supply chains. It's become increasingly clear to observers that we're entering a new era of cyber threats where infiltrating companies via so-called island hopping and stealthily living off the land, meaning they're using your own tools and infrastructure to steal your data. So they're not signaling with new tools that they're in there. It's becoming the norm for sophisticated hacks. Moreover, these well-funded and really sophisticated criminals and nation states are aggressively retaliating against incident responses. In other words, when you go to fix the problem, they're not leaving the premises. They're rather, they're tightening the vice on victims by holding your data ransom and threatening to release previously exfiltrated and brand damaging information to the public. What a climate in which we live today. And with me to talk about these concerning trends and what you can do about it is Gil Vega, the CISO of Veeam. Gil, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Great to see you, Dave. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so you know, you're hearing my intro. It's probably understating the threat. Um, you are Veeam's first CISO. Uh, so how do you see the landscape right now? That's right. Yeah, and I've been with the company for, for just over a year now, but my, my background is in financial services and uh, spent a lot of time managing cybersecurity programs at the classified level uh, in Washington, D.C. So uh, I've gleaned a lot of scar tissue uh, from lots of sophisticated attacks and responses. Um, but today, I think what we're seeing is, uh, is really a one-upmanship by, uh, by our sophisticated, potentially nation state sponsored adversary, this, uh, this idea of imprisoning your data and charging you uh, to release it is, uh, it's, it's quite frightening. And as we've seen in the news recently, it can have devastating impacts, not only for the economy, but for, uh, for businesses. Look at, uh, look at the gas lines in the Northeast right now uh, because of the colonial uh, pipeline, uh, a ransomware attack. I just, um, uh, the, the government just released a, an executive order this morning um, that hopes to address some of the uh, some of the nation's unpreparedness for uh, these sophisticated attacks, and I think it's time. Uh, and I think everyone's excited about the opportunity to really apply a whole of government approach to helping critical infrastructure, to helping and partnering with the private sector, uh, and imposing some risk, frankly, on some of the folks that are engaged in attacking our country. You know, a number of years ago, I often tell this story, I, I had the pleasure of interviewing Robert Gates, the former defense secretary. And it was a while ago, we were talking about cyber and he sits on a number of boards and we were talking about how it's a board level issue. And, and we're talking about cyber crime and, and the like and, and, and nation states. And I said, but wait, wait it, you know, cyber warfare even. And I said, but uh, don't we have the best cyber tech? I mean, can't we go on the offense? And he goes, yeah, we do and we can, but we have more to lose. And to your point about critical infrastructure, it's not, it's not just like, okay, we have the most powerful weapons. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, we have the most valuable infrastructure and a lot to lose. So it's really a tricky game. And this notion of, 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 of having to be stealthy in your incident response is, is relatively new, isn't it? <clears throat> it is, it is. And you know, there are, uh, you mentioned it and I was surprised you mentioned it because a lot of people really don't talk about it. Uh, as you're going into your response, your adversaries are watching, they're watching your every move. Uh, you have to assume in these days a perpetual state of compromise in your environments, which means that your adversaries have access to, um, to your environment to the point that they're watching your incident responders communicate with one another and they're countering your moves. Um, so it's, uh, it's sort of a perverse um, spin on the old mutually assured destruction paradigm that you mentioned. The United States has the world's largest economy and quite frankly, the world's most vulnerable critical infrastructure. Uh, and I would concur with Director Gates uh, or Secretary Gates rather in his assessment that we've got to be awfully careful and measured in our approach to imposing risk. Um, I think the government has worked uh, for many years on defining red lines and I think uh, this latest attack on the colonial pipeline uh, affecting the economy and people's lives and potentially putting people's lives at risk is, uh, is, is towing awfully close to that red line. And I'm, uh, 
I'm interested to see where this goes. Uh, I'm interested to see if uh, if this triggers even a um, you know a new phase of cyber warfare retaliation, uh, you know, proactive uh, defense by the national security community of the United States government. Be interesting to see how this plays out. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Gil. You've got this sort of asymmetric dynamic now, which is unique mm -hmm. for the United States. It's the you know, strongest defense in the world. <clears throat> and I, I want to get into ransomware a bit, and specifically this notion of ransomware as a service. It's really concerning where criminals can actually outsource the hack uh, as a service. Uh, and, and, and the bad guys will set up you know, on the dark web, they'll have, f f you know, help desks and, f and phone lines. They'll, they'll do the negotiations. I mean, this is a really concerning trend. And, I, and, I, and I'm, obviously Veeam plays a role here. I'm wondering as a, as a SecOps pro, what should we be doing about this? Yeah, you mentioned, you mentioned ransomware as a service or RAS, um, uh, RWS. It's, a, it's an incredibly uh, pernicious problem perpetrated by sophisticated uh, folks who may or may not have nation state support um, or alliances. Uh, I think at a minimum, certain governments are looking the other way as it relates to these criminal activities. But with ransomware as a service, you're essentially having very sophisticated folks create very complex ransomware code and distribute it to people who are willing to pay for it. And um, oftentimes take, uh, take a part of the ransom as their payment. The, um, the issue with obviously ransomware is, uh, you know, the age old question, are you going to pay a ransom or are you not going to pay a ransom? The FBI says, don't do it. It only encourages additional attacks. Uh, the treasury department put out some guidance earlier, um, earlier in the year, advising companies that they could be subject to civil or criminal penalties if they pay a ransom and the ransom goes to a sanctioned entity. So there's, there's danger uh, on all sides. Wow. Okay. But so, uh, and then the other thing is this, this infiltrating via digital supply chains, I called it island hopping and, and, and the like. We saw that with the solar winds hack. And the scary part is, you know, different malware is coming in and self-forming and creating different signatures. And not only is it very difficult to, 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 to detect, uh, but remediating, you know, one, you know, combined self-formed malware, it doesn't necessarily take care of the others. And so, you know, you've got this sort of organic virus-like thing, you know, create mutating. And, and that's something that's certainly relatively new to, to me in terms of its, its prevalence. Um, your thoughts on that and how to deal with it. Yeah, exactly right. You know, the advent of polymorphic code that changes, the implementation of uh, advanced artificial intelligence and some of this malware is, is making our job increasingly difficult, which is why I believe firmly you've got to focus on the fundamentals. And I think the best answers for protecting against sophisticated polymorphic code is uh, are, are found in the NIST cybersecurity framework. And I encourage everyone to really take a close look at implementing that cybersecurity framework across their environments, much like we've done here, uh, here at Veeam. Uh, implementing technologies around zero trust, again, assuming a perpetual state of compromise and not trusting any transaction in your environment is the key to combating this kind of attack. Well, and you know, as you mentioned zero trust, zero trust used to be a buzzword. Now it's like become a mandate. And, and it, you know, it's, it's funny. I mean, in a way I feel like the crypto guys, I know there's a lot of, a lot of fraud in crypto, but, but anybody who's ever traded crypto, it's like getting into Fort Knox. I mean, you got to know your customer and you got to do a little transaction. I mean, it's really quite uh, uh, sophisticated uh, in terms of, of the how they are applying of uh, 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 cybersecurity and you know, most, even your bank isn't that intense. And, and so those type of practices, even though they're a bit of a pain in the neck, uh, I, I mean, it, it's worth the extra effort. I wonder if you could talk about some of the best practices that you're seeing, how you're advising your, your clients and your ecosystem and the role that Veeam can play in, in helping here. Yeah, absolutely. As, as I mentioned, there's so many recommendations. And I think the thing that to, to remember here, so we don't overwhelm are, are small and you know medium-sized businesses that have limited resources in, in this area is to is to remind them that it's a journey, right? It's not a destination. That they can continually improve and focus on the fundamentals, as I mentioned, uh, things like multi-factor authentication. Uh, you know, uh, a higher-level topic might be micro-segmentation, uh, breaking up your environment into manageable components that you can monitor real time. Real-time monitoring is uh, is is one of the key components to implementing a zero uh, trust 
uh, architecture uh, and knowing exactly what good looks like in your environment uh, in a situation where you've got real-time monitoring, you can detect the anomalies, the things that uh, that shouldn't be happening in your environment and just spin up your response teams to, to focus and, and better understand what that is. Uh, I, I've always been a proponent of identity and access management controls and a key focus, we've, we've heard it in this industry for 25 years is enforcing the, the concept of least privilege, uh, making sure that your, uh, your um, privileged users have access to the things they need and only the things that they need. And then of course, data mutability, making sure that your, your data is stored in backups that uh, verifiably have not been changed. And I think this is where Veeam uh, comes into the equation where uh, our products provide a lot of these uh, very easily uh, configured ransomware protections around data mutability, with the ability to instantly back up things like Office 365 emails, uh, you know, support for AWS and Azure, uh, your data can be quickly restored in the event that an attacker is able to um, imprison that with uh, with encryption and, and ransom demands. Well, and so you've certainly seen the CISOs that I've talked to, they've, they've had to obviously shift their priorities thanks to the forced mar march to digital, thanks to COVID, but, but identity access management, endpoint security, cloud security kind of overnight, you know, zero trust, we talked about that. And you could see that in some of these, you know, high flying, security stocks, you know, Okta, Zscaler, <laughs> CrowdStrike, they exploded. Um, and, and, and so, but in these, many of these changes seem to be permanent. Sort of you're, you're you know, I guess deeper down in the, in the stack, if you will, but you, you complement these, these, these toolings um, with obviously the data protection approach, the ransomware, the, clouds, the cloud uh, data protection, air gaps, immutability. Maybe you could talk about how you fit in with the broader you know, the spate of tools. I mean, your eyes bleed when you look at all the security companies that are out there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, it, I, I'm just going to take it right back to the NIST cybersecurity framework and the five domains that you really need to focus on, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. You know, and uh, until recently, security practitioners and companies have really focused on on the protect, uh, identify and protect, right, and defend rather, where they're uh, where they're focused on building, you know, moats and castles and making sure that they've got this, you know, hard exterior to defend against attacks. I think there's been a shift over the past couple of years where companies uh, have recognized that the focus needs to be on the respond and recover activities, right? Assuming that people are going to breach or near breach your uh, your entities is a safe uh, is a safe way to think about this and building up capabilities to detect those breaches and respond effectively to those breaches uh, are what uh, are what's key in implementing a successful cybersecurity program. Where Veeam fits into this is with our suite of products that uh, that can help you uh, through the recovery process, right? That last domain of the NIST cybersecurity framework, it'll allow you to instantaneously, as I mentioned before, restore data in the event of a catastrophic breach um, and I think it provides companies with the assurances that while they're protecting and building uh, those zero trust components into their environment to protect against these you know, pernicious and well-resourced uh, adversaries, there's the opportunity um, for them to, uh, to, to recover very quickly uh, using the Veeam suite of tools. Well, I, I, see, I think there's an interesting dynamic here. You're pointing out, Gil, it was not, no longer is it that, you know, build a moat, the queen's leaving her castle, I always say. You know, mm -hmm. there is no hardened perimeter anymore. Uh, and, and so you've seen, you know, the, the, so it's moved, there's a shift obviously from hardware-based firewalls. And I mentioned those other companies that are doing great, but to me, it's all about these, these layers <laughs> and response is a big, big, and recovery is a huge part of that. So I'm seeing increasingly companies like Veeam is a critical part of that, that security, cyber, data protection, you know, ecosystem. I, I mean, to me, it's, it's just as important as the frontline pieces of even identity. And so you're seeing those markets exploding. I, I think it's a, there's a latent value that's building in companies like Veeam that are a key part of those, that data protection layer. You think about, you know, defense strategies. It's, it's not just, you know, the front line. Uh, it, it's maybe it's airstrikes, maybe it's, you know, sea, et cetera. 
And, and I see that this market is actually a huge opportunity um, for, for organizations like yours. I think you're right. And I think the proof is in, you know, in, in, the, in the pudding in terms of how this company has grown and what we've delivered in version 11 uh, uh, of, our, of our suite, including you know, features like continuous data protection. Uh, we talked about that reliable ransomware protection, support for AWS S3 Glacier and Azure Archive, uh, the expanded instant recovery and then support for disaster recovery and backup as a service. Um, you know, uh, what I found uh, most interesting in my year here at Beam is, uh, is, is just how much our administrators, uh, the administrators in our company uh, and our customers companies that are managing backups uh, absolutely love our products, the ease of use, the instant backup capabilities and the support they receive from Beam. It's, uh, it's almost cultish in terms of how uh, our customers uh, are using these products to defend themselves in today's pretty intense cyber threat environment. Well, and you talk about the NIST framework and, and again, a big part of that is recovery because we talked about earlier about do you pay the ransom or not? Well, to the extent that I can actually recover you know, from having all my data encrypted, then I've got a, obviously a lot more leverage. And in many ways, I mean, let's face it, we all know that it's not a matter of, of if, if, it's when you get infiltrated. And so to the extent that I can actually have systems that allow me to recover, I'm now in a much, much stronger position in, in many respects you know, and CISOs again will tell you this, that's where we're shifting our investments and in, in right. you've got to do you know, all of them. It's not just, there's no silver bullet, but, but that seems to me to be uh, just a, a misunderstood and undervalued part of the equation. And I think there's a tremendous upside there for companies like yours. I think you're right. I think what I'll just add to that is the, is the power of immutability, right? Just verifiably, ensuring that your data has not changed because oftentimes you'll have, you'll have attackers uh, in these low and slow uh, live off the land types of attacks, uh, change your data and affect its integrity. Uh, with the Veeam suite of tools, you're able to provide for immutable or unchanged verifiable data in your backup strategy, which is uh, really the first step to recovery after a significant event. And that's key because a lot of times the hackers will go right after the, the backup corpus you know, they'll sometimes start there because that's, that's all the data, you know, but if you can make that immutable uh, and again, you know, there's best practices there too, because, you know, if you're not paying the cloud service for that immutability, if you stop paying, then it be, <laughs> you lose that. So you have to be very careful about, you know, how, you know, who has access to that and, you know, what the policies are there. But, but again, you know, you can put in, you know, so a lot of this, as you know, is people in process, it's not mm -hmm. just tech. So uh, I'll give you last word. I, I, I know you got to jump, but, uh, Really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, sure. You know, the only uh, the only thing that we didn't mention is user awareness and education. I think that is sort of the umbrella uh, key focus principle for any successful cybersecurity program, making sure your people understand, uh, you know, how to deal with phishing emails. You know, uh, ransomware is the huge threat uh, of, our, of our time. Uh, and 90% of ransomware malware is delivered by phishing. So prepare your workforce to deal with phishing emails and I think you'll save yourself quite a few headaches. That's great advice. I'm glad you mentioned that because, because bad user behavior or maybe uninformed user behavior is the, is the more fair way to say it. It will trump right. good security every time. Uh, Gil, thanks so much for coming to theCUBE and, uh, and keep fighting the fight. Best of luck going forward. Great, thank you, Dave. All right, and thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE's continuous coverage of VeeamON 2021, the virtual edition. We'll be right back.